Hello and welcome back. This is the fourth video in the series I've been doing on external devices attaching to the iPhone over USB. In the first three we looked at the Amazon Kindle, iOmega Zip Drive, and a floppy drive. In this video I was going to originally do optical media, but I couldn't get anything to work under Beta 2 of any format of any type of optical drive. So I thought let's just wait till Beta 3 comes out, which, I, which came out today and I've installed on my phone and it hasn't changed anything. So for now we're going to put this on hold. However, some devices that didn't work under Beta 2 are now working under Beta 3, so that gives me hope that someday, perhaps inadvertently, optical media will work with the iPhone. So we'll put that aside for now. And the first thing that we're going to look at today is the Sony PlayStation Portable. This was a gaming system from the last decade, and it had a USB mode it could go into to be a mass storage device. And you could copy in videos, pictures, and music into it and play it, sideload it essentially from your computer. So let's take a look and see if this works with Beta 3, because it did not work with Beta 2 at all. I'm going to go into the USB mode and try to connect. And there it is. You can see the entire file structure of the PlayStation Portable. So let's go back and grab, let's grab a movie. I have a little video clip here of a pinball game and we'll copy it over to the PlayStation Portable's movie folder, or video folder, I should say. And this is a USB 2 device, so it does copy quite a bit faster than the uh, zip drives and flop drives and super disk drives I've been showing you earlier. Because this is a much larger file. All right, all done. So now we can get out of the USB mode on the PlayStation Portable. Go over to videos. And there it is. All right, so that works very well. Very well indeed. Now, I have one other device that also did not work on Beta 2. Let's see if it works on Beta 3. And that is a Casio graphing calculator. This is the FXCG50, part of the Prism series. These things are basically almost full-fledged computers now. It's, it's quite amazing what they can do albeit uh, without Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So really the only way to get information into this is either through an audio port from another calculator for small files, or it supports USB mass storage. So let's take a look and see if this works now under Beta 3. So I will plug in the uh, top part there, and then let's plug this in here. We're gonna go back to the main menu on the phone. There we go. So this will go into USB mode where I'll tell it, yes, I want to do that. And there it is, another untitled. And there is the Casio's file system. Now these things are great. Um, in addition to the, the intended purpose for them, you can, a, a lot of hobbyists have written really cool applications and, and games for it as well. So I have a game here, just a Tetris clone. Let's copy that onto the drive. All right. We'll unplug this. Exit out and go back to the main menu and look at that down at the bottom. There's the Tetris game. That works pretty well. So these, while these 
graphing calculators now are really sophisticated. They don't have a lot of storage space. This only has 16 megabytes. Yeah, megabytes. So uh, you could fill it up pretty quick if you were downloading a bunch of applications and games. There's actually a Game Boy Color emulator for this. So you can imagine having all of those hundreds or thousands of games for that as well. So, you know, it might be, uh, it might be cool for somebody, an engineer, a student, or somebody that has and uses one of these to know that they can get on their iPhone, download something, and sideload, especially if you don't have a desktop around. So anyway, that's that. And that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully, future betas will continue to improve the support, and maybe we can go back and revisit the optical media and perhaps even that little uh, that little three and a half inch floppy disk drive, the one that didn't work. Um, we'll just keep trying and, and we'll see what the future brings. But it's very exciting and it's glad to see that new devices are working, that Apple hasn't basically just already had that up and running and whatever works, works. They're really improving on it. The beta is getting better. So I think this bodes well for the future. So please, as always, if you like my videos, like and subscribe. I'll have more in the future. Take care for now.